I'm Adam Rossin with the Rossin Law Firm, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about a very serious DUI causing serious bodily injury case result that we had at the Rossin Law Firm. Okay, so let's rewind all the way back to March 2020, about two weeks before COVID happened. Our client went out, she went out to a, a restaurant bar in town and she made a mistake. She had too much to drink. She, As she was driving home, she ran a red light and T-boned a car. Now this was a serious accident. Uh, both my client and the person that she hit were basically trauma alerted to the hospital, okay? Very serious. So my client, she had internal bleeding. She had some, you know, internal damage to her to her internal organs. And the person that she hit had a mangled leg, ankle, and foot. The pictures were really, really, really bad. At one point, the doctors thought they were going to have to amputate um, this person's foot. So it was a very serious injury. Now, my client is, she's at the hospital. She's about to be rushed into the ICU. And the DUI officers are there. They, they got there on scene, then they went to the hospital to follow her. And this is a totally different type of DUI case, meaning there's no physical exercises, there's no finger to nose, there's no walk and turn or one leg stand, and there's no breath test in a case like this. Because my client, the suspect at this time, she's already at the hospital. So what the, what the police want to do is they want to get blood. Okay. Now they're talking to her and they always try to get consent first. And in this particular case, the officer was trying to get consent, but my client's in and out of consciousness, about to be wheeled into the ICU for major surgery on her internal organs. To, so she's not going to bleed out. And his reports really mention nothing of that sort. Basically says, I talked to her and, you know, we had some time before she was going to surgery and she gave consent, but her arm was hurting. So I just, I signed for her, no big deal. Now in this particular case, this jurisdiction, number one, did not have body cameras at the time. Number two, they have remote microphones, but they said, oh, you can't get cell service there. It's in the hospital, blah, blah, blah. So we're just not, we just didn't even try to turn them on, but we know we can't get it in the hospital. Okay, so what, again, what proof is there that this police officer did everything the right way when he got her blood, supposedly based on her consent? And we see these kind of issues in cases all the time on these very complex DUI cases that involve serious car crashes in hospitals where police officers cut corners and, you know, fib a little bit in their police report. Okay, so we have a situation where the backup officer who is there, he signed the consent form saying, you know, our client consented for her blood. Well, they got her blood and her blood came back saying she was over the legal limit. And then they arrested her, you know, a few weeks later. Now, this was the beginning of COVID. Luckily, she hired us right away. I negotiated with the detective um, to surrender her a few months later because this was, they, he wanted to go arrest her literally the first week of COVID and you know, we luckily we were able to work out a deal where when things were a little more serious and when she had recovered more because she had, you know, still had stitches and had major abdominal surgery, that when she had recovered that we would surrender her. And we did all that. Then as we're going through this case, because this case took about four years to resolve, we're getting this discovery, we're getting this evidence. And of course, like I said, there's no body worn camera evidence, but this is why we take depositions. And it's important to know that from day one in this, in the prosecutor's hands on this case, they wanted our client to go to prison. She is a successful professional. She's never been arrested before in her life. This was the first thing that ever happened to her. You know, where she, first time she was ever arrested, first time she'd ever done anything wrong in her life. Now, these are tough cases because on one hand, you have somebody who's totally innocent who almost lost their, their foot. Luckily, um, she didn't lose her foot, but still, she's pretty badly injured. Um, very badly injured. And then you have our client who never been in trouble, complete mistake, right? And, you know, does the punishment fit the crime? What is the punishment? What should it be? And so they wanted prison, prison, prison this entire time for four years. And this is a reason why on a case like this, it's best to be slow and methodical. 
and work this case. And to our client's credit, she was able to allow us to work this case for four years. Now, normally a case like this won't go on for four years, but it may go on for two, but because of COVID and everything, it just went on a little longer than it should have. But we take depositions. So we take the deposition of the arresting officer, the, the lead detective, and he testifies just like his report saying, yeah, it was completely clean consent, no issues, no problems. My backup guy who I was training at the time, he signed, she crystal clear gave consent. We got it. I, you know, I smelled alcohol. She looked impaired, blah, 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 you know, and completely clean. And we got the medicals and the medical show she was twice the legal limit. Okay. Well, we question and take the deposition of the backup officer. The backup officer, the one who signed the consent form said, look, I was training. I really didn't know what was going on. I just did whatever the, the lead guy told me to do. I didn't hear her give consent. He just said, hey, sign this. She told me it's okay. And he signed it. Can you believe that? Right? We were shocked. We, I mean, shocked in the way that it's completely wrong bad police procedure. He basically lied on his affidavit, but not shocked that this was the truth. Because, you know, unfortunately we see this all the time where cops just lie. They sign things that, you know, and they just fib things and change the reports. And again, this is another reason why we, we need to have body cameras everywhere. But luckily he, luckily, at least at this point, he told the truth and he said, yeah, look, they were, they were like literally seconds away from wheeling her into the ICU. She was in and out of consciousness. I didn't hear consent. I could bear, I mean, we didn't really even have much of a conversation with her. And he just told me to sign. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was training. So I just signed. Boom, smoking gun right there. So in this case, what we did, we filed a motion to suppress saying that our client's um, constitutional rights were violated. Okay, this was an illegal seizure, an illegal taking of her blood. Um, you know, because she did not give consent. And we wrote this, you know, very long motion detailed with case law. And just a few days before we were going to argue it, the prosecutors came back to us and they said, all right, we're willing to offer probation. Still a felony, but probation, no prison at all. So we had a long talk with our client because in a case like this, the illegal activity that the police did was getting the blood results. So the blood, if we won, the blood would be suppressed, completely gone. Um, but we still had evidence of a car crash. We still had evidence and odor of alcohol and different things. Could we have won the case if we went to trial? Maybe. Could we have lost? Maybe. And if we lost, prison was back on the table. So we had a long talk with our client and our client said, guys, this is an amazing result. I went from prison to probation and you know, absolutely, I'll take the deal. I want the deal. Thank you. Like this was this made this made her her life basically. You know, the last four years, th this was the best news she ever had. So we went ahead, we worked it all out. Case closed. She's on probation. Um, you know, and we talk a lot about well, does the punishment fit the crime, right? In this particular case, we believe that it does. It got. It took us four years to get there, but there was bad police work. The cop blatantly ignored the rules and one cop blatantly lied, right? So should there be a punishment to them? Yes, there most likely won't be, but they violated the rules. And the, you know, the interesting part on this is that had the lead detective just got a warrant, he would have gotten a warrant. He would have got the blood. Everything would have been crystal you know, clear, would have been perfectly clean. The prosecutors would have had a better case. And if they really wanted to stick it to our client, they would have had the full force and ammo of a completely clean, clean case to stick it to our client. But instead, this cop cut corners, we exposed him, and we were going to win that. We believe we were going to win that motion. So in this case, the client was very happy. You know, it was a great result. It took some, you know, took some time. Uh, a lot of really good legal work to expose some of these issues, lies, misstatements, and you know just general corruption. But and the police, had they just went ahead and done it right and gotten a warrant, they would have got the blood. It would have been no problem at all. But they cut corners. They went too fast. They tried to get consent the easy way and, and lie about it, and it benefited our client. So. You know, very good result, very happy client. It's been four years. Again, she's still, it's the first time she's ever been in trouble in her life. 
Um, she voluntarily went into alcohol treatment. She's doing exceptionally well. We're very proud of her. And, you know, we're very happy to help her achieve her best future. So, you know, this is a very serious DUI, totally different than the norm. Um, and again, this is another example of why you need lawyers that really know the ins and the outs and specialize in these type of cases. We're going to go ahead and put a link to my book. You can download my book on Florida DUI that I wrote. It has all the tips and tricks, everything you need to know about DUI. So we're going to put that right here, maybe right here, wherever we decide to edit it. But we'll have that in there. Please download it. You know, we want everybody to be educated about these things. Um, you know, and hopefully this was a great video where you where folks can learn something. If you have any questions at all about DUI, any type of crime at all whatsoever, give us a call 754-206-6200.